Databases is an important component of any business operation. Now a database administrator is under constant pressure to ensure high performance and minimum downtime while also facing other challenges. To solve all these challenges, AWS offers Amazon Aurora, which is a cloud native relational database service that combines the speed and availability of an high-end commercial database with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of an open source database. So in today's session we're going to talk about Amazon Aurora. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's topic. Firstly, we will understand what exactly is Amazon Aurora and talk about some of its prominent features. Next we'll see some of the benefits of using Amazon Aurora and some of its use cases. Finally, we will move on to a demo part where we will create an Amazon Aurora RDS database. Now, before we understand what exactly is Aurora, let me talk about Amazon RDS because Aurora is one of RDS database engine. Amazon Relational Database Service or Amazon RDS is a web service that makes it easier for you to set up, operate and scale a relational database in the AWS cloud. It provides a cost efficient resizable capacity for an industry standard relational database and also manages common database administrative tasks like provisioning, patching, backup, recovery, failure detection and repairing. Now Amazon RDS provides you with six familiar database engines to choose from. Now a database engine is nothing but a underlying software component that a DBMS uses to create, read, update and delete data from the database. The database engine available in Amazon RDS are Amazon Aurora, MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, Oracle Database and SQL Server. Now let us talk about our main topic, what is Amazon Aurora? Amazon Aurora is a relational database engine. It is a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. It combines the performance and availability of a traditional enterprise database with the simplicity and cost effectiveness of an open source database. Amazon Aurora is up to 5 times faster than standard MySQL databases and 3 times faster than the standard PostgreSQL databases. It provides the security, availability and reliability of commercial databases at one tenth of the cost. It is fully managed by Amazon RDS with automates time consuming administrative tasks like hardware provisioning, database setup, patching and backups. Now that you have some idea about what exactly is Amazon Aurora, let us move on to the next topic and understand it better. So now let us first understand what is Amazon DB clusters. An Amazon Aurora DB cluster consists of one or more DB instances and a cluster volume that manages the data for those DB instances. Now a DB instance is nothing but an isolated database environment running in the cloud. And a cluster volume is a virtual database storage volume that spans across multiple availability zone with each availability zone having a copy of the DB cluster data. Now there are two types of DB instances that make up an Aurora DB cluster. First we have the primary DB instance which supports read and write operation and performs all the data modification to the cluster volume. Each Aurora DB cluster has one primary DB instance. In the diagram, availability zone A has the primary DB instance. Second, we have the Aurora replica. This connects to the same storage volume as the primary DB instance and supports only the read operation. Now each Aurora DB cluster can have up to 15 Aurora replica in addition to the primary DB instances. You can see availability zone B and availability zone C have the Aurora replicas. The benefit of this would be high availability as Aurora replicas are located into separate availability zones. So when a primary DB instance becomes unavailable, Aurora automatically fails over to an Aurora replica. You can also specify the failover priority for your Aurora replica. Now this was only for the single master replication. You also have something called a multi master cluster where all the DB instances have read write capability. Now in this case, the distinction between the primary instance and the Aurora replica does not apply. Now manually managing database capacity can take up a lot of time and there is also chances they lead to ineffective use of database resources. Amazon Aurora serverless automatically starts up, shutdowns and scales capacity up and down based on your applications need. It enables you to run your database in the cloud without managing any database capacity. All you have to do is create a database endpoint. Now you can also optionally specify the desired database capacity range and connect your applications. Now talking about the pricing part, you pay on a per second basic for the database capacity you use when the database is active. 
and you can also migrate between standard and serverless configuration with a few clicks in the Amazon RDS management console. Now this was Aurora serverless feature. The next feature is it supports backtracking. Backtracking reminds the DB cluster to the time you specify. Let's say you have deleted some item by mistake which you didn't want to delete. You could also restore it from the backup data or the DB cluster snapshot. But restoring a DB cluster to a point in time launches a new DB cluster and it can take hours to do that. Now with backtracking, you do not require to create a new DB cluster and you can do it in just few minutes. The next feature is Aurora Global Database. Now this allows you to easily scale database reads across the world and you can place your application close to your user. Application gets quick data access with typical cross-region replication latencies below one second. You can achieve further scalability by creating up to 16 database instances in each region which will all stay continuously up to date. The next feature is Aurora Machine Learning. It provides a simple, optimized and secure integration between Aurora and AWS Machine Learning Services without having to build custom integration or moving data around. Aurora exposes machine learning models as SQL function, so you don't need to learn any new programming language or tools for it. Instead, you could just use the standard SQL to build applications that call ML models, pass data to them and return prediction as query results. These were some of the features of Aurora. Now let us move on to our next topic and see some of the benefits of using Aurora. The first benefit is it is high performing and scalable. Now as I've mentioned before, you get five times the throughput of standard MySQL and three times the throughput of standard PostgreSQL. This performance is on par with commercial database at one tenth of the cost. You can also let Aurora serverless handle the scaling automatically for you. The second advantage of using Amazon Aurora is it is highly available and durable. Amazon Aurora makes six copies of your data and stores it across multiple locations across the globe. It also backs up your data into S3 buckets so your data is safe. It recovers from physical storage failures and instant failover typically takes less than 30 seconds. You can also backtrack within seconds to a previous point in time to recover from user errors. Also with global database, a single Aurora database can span across multiple AWS regions to enable fast local reads and quick disaster recovery. The third benefit is it is highly secure. AWS Aurora provides multiple levels of security for your database. This includes network isolation using Amazon VPC, encryption address using keys which you can create and control through AWS Key Management Service. You can also encrypt the data in transit using SSL. Now on the encrypted Amazon Aurora instance, data in the underlying storage is encrypted. The automated backup, snapshot and replica in the same cluster are also encrypted. Now moving on to a fourth advantage, which is it is MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible. The Amazon Aurora database engine is fully compatible with existing MySQL and PostgreSQL open source databases. This means you can easily migrate MySQL or PostgreSQL databases to Aurora using standard MySQL or Postgre import export tools and snapshots. It also means the code, applications, driver and tools you already use with your existing database can be used with Amazon Aurora with little or no changes. The next advantage is it is fully managed by AWS. Amazon Aurora is fully managed by Amazon Relational Database Service. It automatically and continuously monitors and backs up your database into Amazon S3, which enables point in time recovery. You can also monitor database performance using Amazon CloudWatch. The next advantage is it helps in migration to the cloud. MySQL and PostgreSQL compatibility makes Amazon Aurora a compiling target for database migration to the cloud. Now if you're wondering how to migrate to the cloud, you can do this using the AWS database migration service for a secure migration with minimum downtime. Now these were some of the benefits of using Aurora. Let us move on to the next topic and see some of its use cases. The first use case is it can be used in enterprise application. Amazon Aurora is a great option for any enterprise application that uses a relational database. When you compare Amazon Aurora to commercial databases, Amazon Aurora can help you cut down your database cost by 90% or more. It will also improve the reliability and availability of the database. The next use case is software as a service application. Now SaaS applications often use architecture that are multi-tenant, which requires flexibility in instances and storage scaling along with high performance and reliability. Amazon Aurora provides all these features in a managed database offering. 
which will help the SaaS companies focus on building high quality application without worrying about the underlying database that powers the application. The next use case is web and mobile gaming. Web and mobile games that are built to operate at a very large scale need a database with high throughput, massive storage scalability, and high availability. Amazon Aurora fulfills the need of such highly demanding application with enough room for future growth. Since Amazon Aurora does not have any licensing constraints, it perfectly fits the variable usage pattern of these applications. Now these were some of the use cases for Amazon Aurora. Now let us move on to a final topic and see how can we create an Amazon Aurora RDS database. So for our demo, I've logged in into my AWS console. Now if you do not have an AWS account and want to learn or practice AWS services, I would highly recommend you to create an AWS free tier account where you can access more than 75 AWS services for free, that too for a new. Now let us search for RDS. As you know, Aurora is one of RDS database engine. So we click on RDS. Now let us click on create database over here. Now if you already have an Aurora DB cluster in S3, you can just restore it if you want. But in this case, we do not have an Aurora DB cluster in S3. So let us just create our database. So you can see first it will ask you to choose the database creation method. AWS wants to make everything simple for you. So when you select easy create, it uses the recommended best practice configuration. Now here you can also change some of the configuration option after the database is created. So when we select easy create, you can see we only have to select a few configuration. Whereas in the standard create, we have to select all the configuration option. So let us select standard option and continue. Now after this, we have to select the engine type. As default, Aurora is already selected. So let us move on to the next one. Now we have addition. Now you can select this based on your application. Now PostgreSQL is nothing but an object relational database, which includes some features like table inheritance and functional overloading. Now if your application uses all of this, then you can select this. Whereas MySQL is just a purely relational database. So I'll just stick with MySQL compatibility. Next we have the capacity type. First we have the provisioned in which you have to provision and manage your own servers. In this, you can adjust the number and instance classes of your database instances. The next option is serverless. Now I've talked about Aurora serverless in the theory part. Here you only have to specify the minimum and the maximum amount of resources needed and Aurora will automatically scale your capacity based on the database load. So we'll just select provision for now and see what is next. Next we have replication features. As I mentioned before, this Aurora feature uses Aurora replica when a primary database instance does not function properly. By default, single master replication feature is selected. Next, we have to select the engine version. For this, let us go with the default engine version. This version also supports global database feature. Next, we have to select a template. We'll use production for our demo. We can also use dev test for any development use. Next, we have the settings in which we have to name our database cluster. So we'll just name it demo database and continue. Another point to remember here is database cluster name cannot be same as the previous database cluster name. It should be unique. After this, we have to create a username and password. So let the username be admin. We'll just create a password. So when I create my username and password, only me or the people I give access to can use my database. Next, we have to select the DB instance class. Next, we have the DB instance class where we have to select how much virtual CPUs we need, the RAM and the network speed. Now let us go with the default, two virtual CPUs, 16 GB RAM and network at 4750 Mbps. Next option, we can select if you want any Aurora replicas or no. Now creating an Aurora replica can be very helpful as it acts as a backup. So we'll just create an Aurora replica. Now after this, we have connectivity. Now AWS has a default VPC and a default subnet in it. So if you haven't created your own VPC, you can just select the default VPC and the default subnet. So we'll just select our default VPC from here and the default subnet. Next, we have public access. If you select S, yes, your database is going to be public to the internet. So anyone on the terminal on the internet can access your database if they have your username and password. Now when you select no, your database won't have a public IP address assigned. So only your database can be accessed within your VPC. Now we just select S yes and continue. Next, you have to select the security groups. For this demo, let us just create a new security group. You can also choose from an existing security group if you want to. But let me just create a new security group. So I'll just name it demo security. 
security group. Next, we have the database authentication. We'll just select password authentication. For additional security, you can however select password and IAM database authentication. Next, we have additional configuration in which we have database options. Next, backup, which creates a point in time snapshot of your database. We can also select how many days the backup retention period can be. After this, you can also enable encryption, which encrypts your database instances. Next, you have backtrack, which reminds the database cluster to a specific point in time. I've explained about backtrack in the theory session also. Now, after this, you can also enable monitoring. And by default, the monitoring is enabled which will help you see how different processes or thread use your CPU. We will let all of this be in default and click on create database. Now creating your database might take a couple of minutes. You can see here, this is a database name. This is a database instance. Now while it is loading, you can see the role board to be reader. But after it is successfully created, you can see one becomes a writer and the other one is a reader. The engine is Aurora MySQL. Here you can see in which region was it created and the VPC in which it was created. Now you can see our database is successfully created. But when we look here, the status is still creating, which means our database instance are still being created. So we have to wait for a couple of minutes more. Let us refresh it and check if it is created or not. No, it's still creating. Now, after a few minutes, your database instances would be created and would be available. Now, let us click on a database instance. If you have selected MySQL compatibility, all you have to do is copy the cluster endpoint into your favorite MySQL client. Then it will ask you to enter the username and password you set up and you're good to go. Then you can start using your Aurora database. You see, it is very simple creating your Aurora database. And with this, we have come to the end of our session. I hope you people would have learned something from here. Happy learning.